Every time a new loudspeaker comes to market, manufacturers love to claim things like never before seen, truly unique, or an entirely new design, only to show us all this. Thankfully, today's speaker isn't just another box speaker. In fact, it's unlike any speaker I've seen ever. Let's get to know the Pantheon One. Constructed from molded resin, the Pantheon One is an omnidirectional powered loudspeaker that features two six and a half inch high excursion subwoofer drivers, each one powered by their own 130 watt amplifier. It has two four inch paper cone mid range drivers and four three quarter inch silk dome tweeters, with both the mid range drivers and the tweeters sharing two 70 watt amplifiers. The speaker's unique design and construction, along with its driver complement and use of DSP, give it a reported frequency response of 30. 33 hertz to 22 kilohertz, meaning it is almost, almost a full range solution. Because this is a powered speaker, you don't have to worry about amplification or equipment matching. Everything you need to get up and running is internal to the speaker itself. Now, as far as features go, it has an auxiliary input, though it is in the form of a stereo mini jack and it's located on the bottom of the speaker. There is an ethernet port as well as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, though it is Bluetooth version 4.2. The Pantheon supports most major streaming services such as Tidal, Spotify Connect, Amazon Music, and more, though some services such as Apple Music are only accessible through Bluetooth or AirPlay at this time. As for streaming bit rates, the Pantheon supports files up to 24192. Now with respect to control, the Pantheon can be manipulated in one of three ways, via its control app, its touch sensitive controls located atop the speaker itself, or with voice commands through Alexa Assistant. Now, I am primarily a Google user, and I would have preferred Google Assistant integration here, but the Alexa functionality works and works very well. Alexa power users will no doubt choose to control the Pantheon in this way because the speaker's implementation within the Alexa app is flawless. One annoying quirk though about this speaker as it relates to Alexa, if it is not connected to the Amazon service, it will occasionally remind you to do so, and I have yet to find a way to turn this prompt off. In terms of design, the Pantheon One is unique. In all my years of reviewing hi-fi equipment, I have never seen a loudspeaker, powered or not, that looks like it. No matter where we've placed it around our home, it always captures my attention. It is the single most visually captivating speaker that I've seen this side of Bang & Olufsen in a long while, so bravo to the designers at Pantheon. Now, as far as setup goes, it's almost plug and play. I love that you don't have to worry too much when it comes to placement. Of course, if you place it too close to a corner or a wall, you may experience some exaggerated bass, but nothing that is too crazy. So go ahead and place the Pantheon wherever you have a nearby outlet. While the Pantheon may be placed virtually anywhere, I wouldn't call it portable. Weighing 55 pounds, this is a big speaker. And while I've moved it multiple times around our home, usually at Christie's request, the shape and weight make it cumbersome to move. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at this and thinking to yourself that you're just going to move it room to room easily. Once placed, getting up and running is easy with the free Pantheon app. Now, the app was immediately familiar to me because it's the same interface that I have experienced with my name in Arillic products. In fact, when I launched the Forstream app, which is what Arillic uses, it saw the Pantheon speaker as if it was the native app. So if you're an existing Arillic customer, using this speaker is going to be second nature. Now, connecting the speaker to my home's Wi-Fi and to my iPhone or MacBook Pro was trouble-free using either Bluetooth or AirPlay. I was even able to log into my Tidal account within the app itself, which I liked. If you are a Spotify or Amazon Music user, you can easily do the same. Using the app, I experienced zero dropouts or loss of signal. However, when using my M1 MacBook Pro and an AirPlay connection, the sound would occasionally drop out. The M1 architecture has been known to have some audio issues, so it is very hard for me to say if this is the fault of the speaker or our newer M1 laptops. As with anything Bluetooth, its effectiveness is somewhat reliant upon proximity, and if I took my phone too far away from the speaker, the sound would degrade, but that's not the Pantheon's fault. And speaking of sound, what does this alien egg of a speaker sound like? Honestly, it sounds really good. No, it's not going to trick you into thinking it's a proper pair of stereo speakers, complete with a center image and whatnot, but that's not what these types of speakers are about. They're about filling a room with quality sound that can be enjoyed from just about anywhere, and to that end, 
the Pantheon 1 absolutely succeeds. This is an incredibly coherent speaker, top to bottom. It has a powered speaker sound. Think Bang & Olufsen or Sonos rather than a traditional Hi-Fi 1. It is a clean sound with virtually nothing within its frequency response sticking out from the rest, so, so long as you keep the volume just below stun. What is stun? In our open concept living space, with the speaker placed pretty much between the opening between our listening room and the soon-to-be office kitchen space, the Pantheon started to get just a touch boomy when exceeding volume levels of 80 dB, which is quite loud. Keep in mind, I didn't say the bass started to sound bad, it just could become a little more overwhelming compared to the rest of the speaker's otherwise fairly balanced sound. Now I say fairly because I believe the Pantheon is using DSP to their advantage to give the speaker more weight in the mid bass, which keeps things sounding fuller, richer, and dare I say just a little warmer than outright digital, something I don't mind. Listening to An Evening with Silk Sonic, there was plenty of rich mid bass, which suits the album's R&B vibe just fine. While I would not consider this speaker for what I would call critical listening, there is a lot to be said for being able to just listen and enjoy music no matter where you may be in the room or your home for that matter. The mid-range is very clear. Instruments and vocals throughout this part of the frequency range are very detailed and intelligibility is very high. Highs are composed and crystalline, though at volumes in excess of say 80 dB or so, they do pick up a little bit of graininess and can notably distort if pushed beyond that threshold. So again, just keep it below 80 and get ready to groove. But on the whole, this is an incredibly easy speaker to listen to regardless of the source material. Now, as far as soundstage is concerned, if you're moving about your home, the Pantheon has a very omnidirectional sound. The longer you let it play, the more you get used to its room-filling sound, the less directional it's going to feel. That said, if you sit down in front of it or with it, you know, kind of nearby, it's easily located and does not disappear orally, but this isn't uncommon from these types of speakers. Dynamically, the Pantheon scales and gets the point of impact essentially right, though it errs on the side of polite versus going for absolute broke. If you're a fan of powered speakers from the likes of Bang & Olufsen or Bose, the dynamic prowess of this speaker is going to be familiar to you. If you're coming from, say, horn-loaded high-efficiency speakers like Klipsch, you may be left wanting for just a little bit more. I just love the smoothness and composure of this speaker in the face of all music genres, whether it be hard rock or classical music. And I should also note that the Pantheon is absolutely fantastic at lower volumes, completely engaging and enjoyable below 50 dB, which is the perfect volume for listening to music while making dinner or enjoying a glass of wine. Now, speaking of Bang & Olufsen, I immediately thought of them as soon as I powered up the Pantheon. The sound shared between these two brands is more than a little reminiscent. Now, I'm not suggesting that one has anything to do with the other, just that if you're a fan of B&O, I think you're going to enjoy the Pantheon 1. Now, the 1 is superior to our B&O level in terms of sheer room-filling output, but the level has the Pantheon beat with respect to features, adjustability, and, well, flexibility. The level allows for a crazy amount of customization within the app, allowing listeners to essentially tune its sound to taste, not to mention it has auto room EQ built in, whereas the Pantheon does not. The level can be physically customized, allowing customers to change it up or make it fit their space better visually compared to the Pantheon. Oh, and the level is equipped with Google Assistant, too. And while the level is an option, the more likely B&O products to be cross-shopped are the Balance and the A9. Sadly, I have not heard the Balance or the latest version of the A9, so I can't say how either compares to the Pantheon, but these no doubt are going to appeal to this same type of customer. We hope to hear the Balance and the A9 soon, so maybe we'll just have to revisit this head-to-head -head then. Other notable comparisons obviously include the Diviolet Phantom 1 or 2, both of which we haven't had the opportunity to demo, but are working hard to get them in-house. Now, if you're shopping for something similar, but maybe you're on a bit of a tighter budget, there's the LG RP 4G X Boom. Not to mention, you also have the Sonos uh, Play 5, as well as the Bose Portable Smart Speaker can't believe that's the name Bose went with. All three of these are notably cheaper than the Pantheon, though I cannot say how or if they are comparable outside of all of them just offering similar features and whole home room filling sound capability. I have to say, I have grown quite fond of this weird space-aged egg-shaped speaker in the Pantheon 1. It is both unique and familiar all at once. For me, it's a breath of fresh air. There just aren't enough companies, not named Bang & Olufsen, willing to break the mold every now and again and come to market with something truly unique, if for no other reason than because 
You can. With all the whiz bang tech we're constantly told is so great, why is it always packaged in the same boring wrappers? I love this speaker, and while it may be too weird for some, it's just right for me, which is why it's going to be sticking around. So that's it. That is now my review of the Pantheon One powered loudspeaker. But before we sign off, I wonder what Christy thought of it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's so different. And mm -hmm. I think for, for me, I think it sounds great. Mm -hmm. And it's easy. It is. When it comes to hi-fi, there are really not enough products like this out there. I don't have to think about it all. You just hit play. Yeah. Honestly, like, it. I wish everything was that simple. Yeah. I, I will admit on the ease of use factor, it's off the charts. Um, some would say that's because it maybe lacks certain features that other things have, but there is something to be said for just plug and play. And I think for a lot of people, it's going to, it's, it's really going to hit the mark. Um, as unique looking as it is, I actually think the looks are, are a huge selling point for me. Oh yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's kind of like art yeah. in a way. Um, it's so unique and different and, I know it was a bit cumbersome for you to move around all the different places that I wanted to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, but at least it wasn't just another, you know, kind of boring black box. And yeah, uh, so I appreciate the level of design that went into it. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I feel like it was one of the few speakers that sounded good in the house mm -hmm. Early on, like when we were doing all of our renovations, we had just moved in. Yeah. We, we live in a pretty big space. Mm -hmm. um, that's like an open living kitchen dining area. Yeah. And if you watch any of the videos that we did when we just moved in under the home reno uh, renovation playlist, you'll see how much we struggled. And this, we had this from the beginning pretty much when we moved in. Yeah. And it was one of the few speakers that at least for me, I felt we could listen to and it didn't sound like a disaster. No, it, it totally got us by uh, the the low points in trying to get this room listenable. I'm with you. I think it sounded great no matter where I put it, including, and I know this is not recommended and I'm not suggesting that the speaker is all weather or meant to be outside, but we have a rather large covered patio space uh, at our house. It sounded great outside. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's probably one of my favorite places to listen to it. Yeah. I can't wait, you know, oh. down down the road, like mm -hmm. a year or so, <laughs> if we can ever get a swimming pool uh, put in. Mm -hmm. how it's That's where I think it's going to live. Yeah. Um, like you said, it's covered, so it's out of the elements. Mm -hmm. And just was so great, like sitting outside, doing work on the laptop or... You know, watch, you know, when the sun's setting, having some wine and mm -hmm. just relaxing. It's that perfect speaker that just gets it done. Yeah. I mean, not really much else to say. No, I mean, I, I wish we had more opportunities to compare it to uh, speakers that I think you would be cross shopping, like the Bang and Olufsen mm -hmm. um, A9 that we mentioned, or maybe even the Balance. Um, and obviously the DVLA. I think that those are going to be heavily shopped against a speaker like this yeah and as soon as we can get any of those in-house we can definitely revisit this one and let you know what our thoughts but to me it's very similar to what i feel like i recall from um bang and olufsen mm -hmm. so i think if you're if you have it if you've enjoyed that sound before mm -hmm. and you want something a bit more room filling yeah if you have big spaces like we do um but you don't want to spend Bang & Olufsen money, I think this would be a really good option because it is a little bit more affordable. I mean, it's not bit. cheap or It's anything, not cheap, but it is a little but bit. But it's not as expensive yeah. as spending um, Bang & Olufsen money. Completely agree. Completely agree. I think there is more than a few similarities in terms of their sound. Um, so that's one limb I had no problem going out on. If you're a Bang & Olufsen fan already, um, probably going to like the Pantheon 1. Um, and you can you can configure the Pantheon one, especially using Alexa, to work inside of a kind of distributed or wireless whole home audio system through some of these smart apps. So it's not like you have to be married to their ecosystem the way some products kind of make you, which is which is kind of nice. Well, any anything else? I mean, not really. Other than I used it mostly 
um, with our Apple Music account, like mm-hmm. just doing, just casting it or whatever, airplay. You, like AirPlay <laughs> straight to the speaker. Mm-hmm. And I thought it worked great. Yeah. Um, I like being able to sit at my computer and just decide what I want mm-hmm. and and do it that way. Um, so to me, that was really easy. I didn't have any issues with the signal. Um, I thought it sounded good. Like I didn't, to me, again, just to me, I couldn't really hear a difference between mm-hmm. doing um, AirPlay versus um, using Bluetooth the, or the Bluetooth or the app itself mm-hmm. um, that comes with the speaker. Yeah. So I don't think there I don't think there is a, a big quality difference. I will say this about AirPlay: if you sync to the speaker in the Apple um, kind of control panel and you set it to be your laptop or computer's speakers, then the volume controls on your keyboard will raise the volume on the Pantheon One. However, if you're inside of Apple Music and you sync or use AirPlay inside the app itself, then the slider bar inside of Apple Music controls the volume, but not necessarily your keyboard. That is one thing that I guess I didn't point out, or that's just a little power user tip. But aside from that, I found AirPlay to be exceptional, probably better uh, in terms of range than Bluetooth. I don't know why. Um, and then the app, both Amazon and the Pantheon app were flawless, absolutely flawless. Yeah. I think it's a really cool speaker and I'm really excited to see maybe what else this company comes out with. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely, uh, they, they definitely favor interesting design. I mean, just from their website to the actual speaker itself, like nothing is boring about no. this company from our initial experience anyway. Yeah. And it, it, the website experience carries over to the packaging, the packaging carries over to the speaker. I mean, it is a very well-branded first outing from a new company. Mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I think they have a bright future. I agree. Anything else? Nope. All right. Well, that is now our review of the Pantheon one powered loudspeaker What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And I have a question of the day for you. And that is, what do you think of the styling of the Pantheon One? Oh, you're really opening up yourself there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm curious because honestly, I think more speaker companies need to take risks like what Pantheon has done. And I'm just kind of curious how you all feel about it. So <laughs> let's get the conversation going. If you like this video. Be nice. <laughs> yes. Keep it, keep it uh, respectful. respectful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for me and more us today. So remember, The only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye.